All right. Welcome back to the Mike Show, everybody. The year is 1996. Marilyn Manson released Antichrist Superstar. Tool released Anima. Rage Against the Machine released Evil Empire. Sepultura released Roots. Metallica released Load. And Korn released Life is Peachy. But we're here to talk about Pantera releasing The Great Southern Trend Kill. If I remember correctly, it was originally titled The Great Southern Trend Killers, but they changed it to Great Southern Trend Kill. The album reached number four on the Billboard charts and was certified platinum. Trend Kill was produced by Terry Date and drummer Vinnie Paul, with Ulrich Wilde doing some of the recording. This album marks the first cracks in the band, in my opinion. It's a great album, but when a band records in one studio and the singer records in another, things cannot be going all that great. Being in a band isn't all the fun and games it's cracked up to be. You spend a lot of time together and you can easily begin to get on each other's nerves. Dime, Vinny, and Rex recorded the music at Chase and Jason Studios in Texas, while Phil recorded his vocals at Trent Reznor's Nothing Studios in New Orleans. Not having Phil there made it harder on Dime to write solos because he didn't know what the vocals were going to be doing. The band had planned to record at a professional recording studio in Dallas, but when they recorded some of the demos at Dime's house, they decided just to record it there. After they got a hold of the same recording console they recorded all their other albums with. Phil was there for the preliminary writing sessions for Trend Kill, but after wanting some personal space and to keep his bandmates from seeing him high on painkillers for his back pain, he went back to New Orleans. Pantera was known for drinking and smoking weed, but Phil took it a step further and started using heroin around this time, something that bassist Rex noticed at pre-production for the album. Rex said that one day they were working on the album and Phil looked at him and slapped his armpit, something Rex had seen hanging out with other friends that had done heroin. Rex said Phil was a wreck during those writing sessions for the album and that the band was pretty burned out by that point. On July 13, 1996, Phil would overdose while on tour supporting the Trend Kill album after a hometown show in Dallas. The longest song on the album called Floods has what many people believe to be Dime's best guitar solo. Guitar World magazine voted it the 15th greatest guitar solo of all time, the highest of the three Dime solos to make the list, with Cemetery Gates being ranked number 35 and Watt coming in at 57. The Flood solo was built from stuff Dime had improvised on stage during his 20-minute guitar solo, featuring Eddie Van Halen's Eruption and Randy Rhodes' Revelation Mother Earth and whatever else he felt like adding to it. Trend Kill is Pantera's most aggressive album, with singer Phil doing a lot more screaming than the Rob Halford-inspired singing he was found on Cowboys From Hell. The songs are faster and more abrasive. The guitars get more tuned down. There's also some experimenting with acoustic guitars and ballads. Unlike any of the previous Pantera albums, on this album the vocals are double-tracked, meaning you're hearing two voices at the same time on this one. Trend Kill is the first album to feature the late Seth Putnam of Anal Cunt as a guest musician doing the high screams on Trend Kill, War Nerve, 13 Steps to Nowhere, and Suicide Note Part 2. Another guest musician is Ross Karpelman playing keyboards on Suicide Note Part 1 and Living Through Me, Hell's Wrath. The subject matter on this album covers drugs, a mankind ending flood, and lashing out at the media. Someone who I would never guess as a Pantera fan is the DJ Moby. He said the Great Southern Trend Kill is so unrelentingly dark. The lyrics on War Nerve are some of the most unrelentingly evil lyrics you can imagine. They make church-burning Norwegian Satanists sound like Sunday school teachers. War Nerve kicks off with the lyrics, Truly fuck the world for all it's worth, every inch of planet Earth, fuck myself, don't leave me out. This album came out when grunge was king, and it was also the year that rap metal was becoming all the rage. The band's road manager told them that they should not expect sold-out shows because kids were listening to different music now. Metal was supposed to be on its way out. Except that when the band played their first show of the tour, it was sold out, and so were most of the other ones. The president of Pantera's label even called them and told them they should make sure to start rapping on their record. They all laughed and said they would get right on that. The Great Southern Trend Kill is basically a giant middle finger to the music industry. The 20th anniversary edition of the album includes a remastered version of the original album, plus a dozen unreleased mixes, instrumentals, and live recordings. All right, everybody, that does it for this episode of The Mike Show. We will see you next time when we go over the final Pantera album. Karate chop that subscribe button and notification bell. See ya! Hello there, listen to me. Do you want to know about all the new things? Then hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. 
Hit all the bells, liberty bell, bells and whistles, smoke and mirrors, smokes and magics. Just jump through the hoops like they want you to.